And here we go. This is Flash at In a Perfect World on the, uh, the 6th of October, 2020. Made it here all by myself. <laughs> hey, Grimner. No co-hostage tonight. <laughs> to break the monotony of the rant. So, bear with me this evening, guys. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Greg, giving giving me a place to do this crazy shit. And for the uh, chatting experience that you're going to find on reallibertymedia.com, we've got bots and bodies. we got Barman and Beetle, Cowboy Tech, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti-Circulo, hello, honey, Chloe, Chloe, Dan Van Meter, Flash somebody from B work. Jays nines Jays Meister Brown. Prince Rob works. Trust no one. F Vanna White Weather Dork The Phantom Asmo two CC six six Cyborg Noodle N Siv Matt W J two O O two Pwn Sauce and smart ass is back coming along. And the holiest Roger and Zepix. So if you feel like chatting, those are your combatants for the afternoon. <laughs> and uh let's see. I think tonight some variation of this is gonna make it to a title. But I was listening to the Australian complainers, because they're in some real shit right now over the COVID. And They said, somebody said this in a sentence, living is illegal. Hmm. So you can't go outside. If you do go outside, you have to answer to the authority to explain why you're enjoying your freedom and being outside. And on and on and on. And all this crap over a, a questionable virus. Because this is not the way that you get sick. Now, if you're already sick and you're already old, then you're probably going to end up with this shit, whatever this is. But it's not going to get anybody else. There are not enough of us to where it warranted all this fucking drama. And now, the king of America got hit with the COVID. Oh, wow. What a brilliant thought that was. These people... They think ahead. I'll give them that. So Trump has the COVID now. So this puts you in one of two places. Either it's real and he dies, or it's not real and they fake surviving the fraud. And that's what I think's going on. But I'm on that conspiracy theorist side of everything. Nowhere. I don't believe anything the government says. Fuck them. They've never told the truth so far. But all of a sudden, here we are, 2020, with a financial collapse, society's burning all over the fucking world. People are just going completely ignorant, doing the most horrible things you can think of. And we're supposed to be civilized at this point in history. I mean, crying out loud, it's not that damn hard. To not kill a guy next to you. But I think the Jews insist on it. Until they stop, people are going to behave this way. And we got the proof in, well, most of the political bodies that have gone too far and continue to go further. Jews, they're up to their eyeballs in either the Jews or the Chinese. The Chinese are holding debt. And the Jews, I don't know what they're holding. Guilt? (laughs) They make people do shit. (laughs) The <laughs> wildest shit. Dude. Hey, my friend, come over here to kiss the wall. Mm-hmm. It will make you look good to my brothers. And I don't believe any of that. I think that the few times I was in a closed society where we looked at everybody else's, don't trust them. Nobody could get in because if you didn't already know us, then who were you? Hmm. Because we all grew up together, so we knew who everybody was. 
And if you didn't grow up with us, then there was kind of no point to bother to try to get into that little group. It wasn't ever going to happen. And I assumed my whole life that that's how people were. Apparently, TV fixed all that. Oh, give me one second, guys. I need a 10 second break. Thank you. I felt a cough coming on from the uh, smoking. <laughs> so, I wanted to give you, spare you the uh, in- inconvenience of sharing that for a moment. I hope I did. Anyway. So I guess what I was ranting on is if the COVID was real, it should have killed Trump, but it's not real. So he's going to, you know, miraculously be cured like Jesus, you know, and the people that believe this stuff, they don't. Well, I guess for one, they trust the Fed not to do a horrible thing like this to them. I don't trust the Fed to not do a horrible thing like this to me. I, I don't feel special or entitled or different or better than or any of that hard shit. And I, I'm slowly watching the Danes. They're doing their you know, their submissive little act. Because right now people are up in the air. And we're so close to Sweden. I would hope the Swedish vibrations would you know, make their way to Denmark and slap a couple of these people in power some sense in their head. But I would assume by the way of the uh, compliance to the COVID being a reality, that there's money attached to it if you participate. I can't prove that, but I would venture to guess. Because all the for every mask I see on the ground, that tells me one of two things happened here. Somebody dropped their stuff by accident, or they missed the trash can by 400 yards. <laughs> These people don't know what a yard is. So, uh, I don't know, about 425 meters. <laughs> and I find it amusing myself because I don't believe that this COVID exists the way they explain it. I don't think that if it did exist, I think the last thing that the United States government or the English government would do is to prepare the population for a pandemic. I think they'd encourage you to go get it so you would drop like fucking flies. And then they can blame it on the wireless. or They can blame it on whatever makes their, their boat float. <laughs> blame is equal. You just go, hey, I saw him do that. Somebody's going to believe you. Whether you saw it or not, just say it out loud sometime and see what happens. Because... In our old age, we've gotten gullible and soft. We take people's word for life decisions that we should investigate ourselves. That if you were in a sane frame of mind, I suppose, that would be your first instinct would be to check this shit out. Something don't seem right about this. But yet, we live among people who... Uh, depend on their government or their news media for the truth. And if you try to tell them, well, look at your history and point out one time in history where you've got the truth, and I'll believe this virus is possible, but nobody seems to be able to do that. Hmm. I happen to be one of the pro-cons piracy theorist people. I believe that. These horrible things that happen, they don't happen by nature. They don't happen by stroke. Oh, that poor fucker, he's just got the worst luck in the world. Well, let's make him the president of you know, Bank of America then. Because you know these people run the economy into the ground. But they tell you that they're not. Look at all their buddies, they're all rich. What are, we, what, what are those poor idiots sniveling about? They must not understand finance. <laughs> yeah. In my lifetime, I've heard it all. I've had people tell me, well, you don't understand money because you don't have any money. But they knew me, assuming that I would think that for some reason, magical, they had money because I don't associate with wealthy people. 
<laughs> wealthy people, as he stated, wouldn't wouldn't associate with me. So who the hell are you? <laughs> so see, it's all in how you take the information you're given and how you interpret it. Sadly, <clears throat> excuse me. I believe that there's a there's a direct way to the mind through the state. And if you believe in that entity and you trust it, then you there you go. Now, for the rest of us who don't, whatever part of our little brains are all mashed up and we just don't get it. Uh, <laughs> that's that's the attitude I see from uh, the enlightened ones, you know, hiding behind paper masks to keep a job that most of them claim they don't like in the first place. One more, one more break. Hold on one second here. I'm going to hit this pipe real good. Give me a minute. Hum to yourself for 10 seconds. Yeah, that was good. Okay, now, so, I don't know, I guess the way I look at these things uh, that I've been talking about on the, on the show by myself is I don't deserve what they believe. You know, what makes them so much uh, more concerned about my existence than me? That I'm so dumb and so weak and so pitiful that I need the government to force me to do things for my own good. The whole concept doesn't really make any sense when you think it through. What, what would the government force you to do that was good for you? Let's, let's identify these things. Hmm. I know we'll get them to not leave the house and go outside and stay in the house as much of the time as possible with little or no contact with other human life forms. This is for your own good. <laughs> COVID, COVID restrictions. Ooh, crying out loud. Well, I guess if you're listening to this tonight or today, whatever, uh, it's insane. Restrictions to stop you from breathing on somebody else. Uh, you know, that doesn't explain to me how the air that's in your house magically stays in your house, doesn't get out of your house, and get mixed up with all the other air out there, you know, outside of the house. And then, whoops, look, hey, it's down in the next town because it got carried away in a breeze. <laughs> and it's got COVID in it. <laughs> oh, thanks, honey. <laughs> I got the elixir. <laughs> Uh, things are just, see, as bad as the world wants to portray itself to be to me. Yeah. Oh, we're horrible. We'll kill you. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> My personal life is relatively violence-free. <laughs> I mean, unless you call getting coffee a big deal, you know, like some kind of crime. <laughs> well, okay, that was ridiculous, but... I do smoke pot before I do the show, and sometimes during, so bear with me tonight. It's a COVID kind of night. But, so I'm going to try to explain. I don't deserve what other people believe, you know, because i got my own belief system. So where does their belief system, wh when does it cross? You know, where, where, when things go bad, is that when you don't agree with somebody else? Because, uh-oh, wait a minute, red alert, we don't agree. Um, hmm. And then think about the things that you disagree about. And usually, it's the same exact thing. You're just on one side of the thing, pro, or on the other side of the thing, against. What a concept. You know? let's, let's get people to fight amongst their their selves, not the government that enforces the shit that they don't even understand we do. No, no, no. Let's get these people to constantly be at war with each other. And if race doesn't do it, or gender doesn't do it, what else do they have? They got politics, and then they got religion, and then they got education. 
So you're in this perpetual circle of constant doom, dread, and despair. It's horrible to watch this. Uh, <laughs> but people claim, well, you're in it too, and I don't feel in it. Uh, hmm. I feel as though I'm watching it from a distance, because when I go out in public, there's, uh, there's no conversation about me not sanitizing my filthy hands when I go into the store. Uh, nobody ever stops me and says, put your fucking mask on, what are you, some kind of barbarian, none of that shit. But occasionally I feel a look of like hmm, displeasure because I don't comply. And I don't feel there's an age requirement attached to that. That's just a matter of the person that's looking. The person looking on is judging everybody else through the person looking on. <laughs> so who fucking cares? <laughs> but we've been convinced over the last 10 months that the deadliest freaking virus in the history of mankind is lurking behind every fucking shadow. Under fingernails, behind ears, yeah, dirty pubic hair. I mean, for fuck's sake, don't have sex, don't this, don't, 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 don't. Now, it took me about till about February to really believe at the fine point that no, this is absolute control mongering. These people want my soul. <laughs> they they can't have it. I won't willingly join them. So they're going to socially guilt me into complying to this complete stupidity. Now, if I was an 80-year-old in the hospital with pneumonia, I wouldn't consider the coronavirus to be a hoax. I would consider it to be extremely fucking real. But I'm not. <laughs> so I only look at this from the standpoint of God. And the one I got is... I didn't act like an idiot out there protecting myself from everybody before the coronavirus. And there's all kinds of shit going on. Flu, uh, kinds of airborne diseases that yeah, you can get from people if your immune system is weak. <laughs> there's all kinds of things I can contract all by myself just through having a terrible diet. You know, eat a lot of shit, uh, drink a lot of soda pops. You know, I'm bad enough with the coffee and the sugar and the milk, but I'm aware of what I'm doing. I'm not, uh, how do you put it? I think people feel like when you try to talk to them about, you know, their physical health, they don't want to know. It's none of your fucking business for one, but you can look at them and see. Hmm. And there's ways like eyes. I'm not talking about like the standard crap would be weight. I think that's part of it, but not all of it. I think there's other things like the crap that we uh, are addicted to, like the candies and the snacks and all this. We've been doing them our whole life, right? They've been doing us a little harm at a time over long periods of time. But what I found out about you know, eight, ten years ago, There's ways to combat the negative. You can maybe not ever get back to 100 because now I'm older. Fuck, I'm, I'm running down, not getting better. But I can maintain what I've got left and last a you know, little bit longer on the scale. And then you look at the COVID from my perspective, and I see all these mandates to protect you are just ways to break your spirit and keep you in a state of physical illness that when it by the time it hits you you won't realize how it started your mind won't accept that the very help that you got made you sick and that that's what i think of, that the state is counting on they're trying to get rid of us i call this the great calling of 2020 since the start and 2020 ain't over i know the death count isn't very uh, admirable at this point there's presidents that have done a lot better with a few bombs than this COVID fucking nonsense. But what they didn't explain from the start was if they could get enough of us to follow these mandates and succumb to these uh, 
restrictions. Well, then enough of us will be sick by Christmas time. Hmm. That everything that they worried and warned about last year will actually be real. And they're going to blame it on the corona, but it's not going to be from that. It's going to be from the masks and being left alone, isolated, helpless. People couldn't, can't see their family members. This is ridiculous. Now, I'm not talking about any one particular. There's This is globally. Different places are complaining about different things. Except Sweden. The Swedes are probably having the laugh of a lifetime. Because they've been the butt of the joke for so freaking long. And they did their share of fucking boo-boos with the uh, immigration. But this kind of balanced everything. Because people don't give a fuck about each other. You know, when you come right down to it, they talk a big fucking game. Oh, we are so concerned about those poor people over in that country. Let's bring them over here and save them. That's just political bullshit. They're playing chess with their freaking fiat fake for fake money. So, vote vote a little bit longer. Stay involved in the situation and just keep it alive instead of collapsing it. Because you can't collapse another man's illusion. I, my mine collapsed a long time ago as far as uh, government, state, and all that shit goes. And then I live in one. But I'm not a member of this particular uh, <laughs> government state thing here. I'm a guest. And I think it's just worked out. What I needed in life happened to me. So I'm, I see, I just assume that of other people that if you're not happy, well, you're the one that's not happy. Well, what are you doing wrong? Because <laughs> everybody has a bad day or a fit or a bad moment here and there. Come on. That's just living. But to wake up every day not uh, not comfortable where you are, not pleased with your surroundings, that would be alien to me. Uh, I know I'm not a happy, smiley, lovable guy on the internet chat or the radio, but I think a person kind of softens me. I'm not so harsh to people. <laughs> And then I surrounded myself over the time I've been here with nice people that uh, they're helpful. They want something, so they do this to acquire that. You know, it's like bartering and trading. And we've got a little network going on. Yeah, I treated myself to some uh, enhanced flowers Friday because of it. Use your imagination to decipher enhanced flowers. I'm sure you can do it if you give it a little bit of consideration. And there's even kits to create your own. Now, you can do this stuff by yourself. Hmm. It's amazing, the technology that we have. And we waste it away on all this frivolous, crying out, just garbage. You know? Let's create an internet and then collapse the economy. <laughs> that was his problem. Well, they're going to reset it, but without a card, you're not going to eat. They haven't explained that part to the public yet. But cards will probably be available to citizens. Yeah. And I don't know how they'll start. Probably started out with paper. You sign up because there's like homeless people. These people got to eat. Where do they get money from? Think about that. They can't all be stealing. They all live together. Christ's sake. No, where, where the where did the homeless get their income so they can make something to eat? That's an interesting concept, isn't it? I've never really given it much thought, but um, this thing all really exploded after I left the states. The states must have been a bore compared to how they are now when I lived there. <laughs> let's see. So let's go with uh, memories of America. Yeah, I got plenty of them. And the memories that I have of the country are, are basically people and places. So it's not it's not like political parties make a bit of difference in any of that. See, that's probably why I don't take this political shit too often serious in the first place. Is people are just people, you know. And I was living in Scotland when I met Sir, 
And right now, according to the internet webs and the links that I've been catching information and whatnot from the news folk, Scotland is really going all full blown fucking Corona Bologna. Lockdowns, fines, and you name it, they want the control. So, according to the medical experts that are playing the coronavirus game on television, you know, making uh, video links and whatnot, they say that it's just a postponement to lock shit down. Okay. Well, whether it is or whether it's not, it's what the fuck is going on. So, it's a nice way to avoid the problem in a sense. You know, let's let's explain the problem, and then we can put off stopping the problem by well, we've just explained the problem to you. Now shut up and go away. <laughs> Me little kid, good little boys and girls, and. Wow, I guess that's what America turned into. Because it seems to be what, what bit of information I see. The governor of this state. Oh, Christy got the freaking corona. So he's going to play the corona hoax off too. I wonder if they got a pool. You know, the big shots in politics. And you just pull your name out of a hat. Or a name comes out of a hat. And whoever's name on, is on that. They got the corona. First it was Trump, and then it was Christie, and then now it'll be like five more governors will come forward, and they'll all have the corona, but the Democrat guys will die, and the Republicans will live. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. I, I mean, if that wasn't the case, at least if this is what happens, I won't be surprised. That's how. Uh, that's how seriously I take this government stuff. Hmm. So, what else have I got? I don't really have a whole lot to really jabber on because life in the little rural here is really good. Uh, people are still alive. Uh, treat me good. I'm still going to the grocery to get my shit every, uh, every other day or so. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen any kind of price hike gouging or anybody trying to take advantage of nothing. It's still still just the same, except for the bar. And haven't gone in because you can't go in unless you wear the thing. You know, I ain't wearing the thing. You wear the thing. I think Karen should wear the thing. Karen should wear two of them. One over her mouth and well, the other one. Never mind. But yeah, I guess you get the point. This new Karen. I haven't run into a Karen here. So I'm going to say there's no Karens uh, in town. But I'm sure there are. I just don't think any of them, uh, unless you know them already, they're, they're not going to, you know, <laughs> they're not going to verbally assault you in the street. Let's just say that. But I would assume if somebody was family or friends with somebody else, they didn't comply to what they wanted. I haven't seen it yet, but I would assume that maybe people would. Uh, I don't know. What would they do? I guess they'd probably just say, oh, you don't like it? No, I ain't doing it. Okay, well, I like it. I'm doing it. Okay, see you later. And that would be the, probably the end of the conversation. Now, not in Copenhagen. Copenhagen's a little bit more populated. It's a lot of crazy people from all over the place. You know, so when you start mixing all those wacky doodle outsiders, one big gigantic bowl of soup, and then you start doing all this gloves and lockdowns and hand sanitizing, driving people mad with the imaginary virus. Fuck. They've seen the movies. They know what's going to happen. People are afraid they're going to turn into zombies and start eating each other. It's, it's insane. And if they don't believe that, then the only op the only uh, option to it would be the opposite. And they're so concerned about themselves. This is self-preservation gone completely fucking insane, right? This is self-preservation to the point of, I want to live so bad uh, that I want you to stay away from me. <laughs> so, now, that's Grimm's normal stand, right, Grimner? 
Graham is an isolationist, did I say isolationist son of a bitch. Right, Grinner? You think people's filthy? Keep your hands off me. <laughs> That's what he says. He says yes in the chat. Okay. Now, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but I am, luckily, I am not one of those people that seems to draw the lovey-dovey crowd when I go out anyway. So, hmm. I go out there with, uh, what do you call it, the freedom to know that one in a million might shake my hand. <laughs> and women, no, women don't hug me unless they know my name. It's just... I don't know. It must be the way I carry myself because I'm really small. I'm like a big 12-year-old. Well, not even a big one. Maybe a big 9-year-old. <laughs> and steroids. <laughs> I, I don't know. You figure it out. But to play these asinine social games because I saw it on TV and the news is the most ignorant reason to follow up government mandate. I'm kind of surprised that people weren't smarter as a, you know, as a collective and could see through, you know, through the bullshit. Let's see. I've got a cold. What does the doctor say? Vitamin C, vitamin D, and get out and sit out in the sunshine for a little while. You know, if you got a fever, cook it. Starve a cold, feed a fever. You know, shit like that. Things that we grew up hearing. And here we are in the most intelligent time in history. And you got people fucking exercising with masks on their face like some kind of monkey. What the fuck is wrong? Oh, even a monkey wouldn't do it. The monkey would fight. I've seen people on video links on YouTube spray their dogs with disinfectant. Uh, just the most ignorant crap. Oh, the hand sanitizer goo. Woo. I, every time I see somebody grab that stuff, it, it makes. I wonder if when I look at them, if my mouth doesn't drop open and I, my eyes bug out because I feel that uncomfortable when I see it. But I don't know. I'm not aware enough of my own body right now you know, to look back and go, "Hey, I hope I didn't freak them out, freaking out over what they're doing." <laughs> that would look strange. But hmm. and then of course, if you were the one looking on, you'd probably be insulted by that. Because, you know, I'm sanitizing my hands for you, motherfuckers, so you don't go home and die. <laughs> How do you explain to people what happened to, uh, you know, it's my responsibility to do my living the way I see fit. I smoke. There you go. Can't stop me from that. That's free. How do I smoke with a mask on? <laughs> Put a hole in it, I suppose. And I fucking would, too. And then have the cigarette dangling with another hole to blow the smoke out from. <laughs> so, yeah, that's fucking shit. Yeah, this is insane. You know? <clears throat> the expectancy to live because the government is protecting you. It, is that, I bet that doesn't work in places like, I don't know, Syria, Lebanon, Oh, you know, places like that. Those uh, Afghanistan places. Far away places you'll never see. And if they showed you pictures of what the American government does with the military in these foreign places, you'd be sick. You'd wonder why that's never happened to you in America. So, I think they came up with the COVID so that they can do that to you in America. I think Palestine's coming. All the rules are all in order now. The Jews are so deep in the Senate, you can't can't dig them out with a knife. And there's a lot of people, this is the sad part, promoting that the Jews participate in a U.S. government. By partnership, if you will. That's the way I see it. Except that the Israelis got all the, hey, we're going to do this. And the Americans got all the, okay, Mr. Jew, we'll do that. And to this day, here we sit. More and more restricted. More and more rules. Little here, little there. Because 
rumor had it for years that uh, society was trying to shut down the bar here, the bars. There was more bars, and then the, the uh, steel plant cut down a shift, stopped selling so, you know, so much steel, less people working there, less reason to be drinking, blah, blah, blah. So now they're down to a handful. And I'm, the bartender was telling me this stuff. And I see how they're using the COVID to get rid of the bar system. What I don't understand is outside of a financial collapse they're preparing for, I don't see any other reason to do any of the crap that these people have done here in Denmark, let alone anywhere else I've rather seen the internet things on, like Australia. Ooh. Man, if you want to be a prisoner of Her Majesty, go to Australia. You can't even get in the country. They're not even doing uh, traveling or nothing. Now, I think, myself, that Australia and Canada have the same financial problems because they're so deep in with China. China owns a lot of their debt. Or all this claiming. Let's say just claiming. And it seems to me that because of that debt, that the Australian governments are being pushed into behaving the way they're told, making these ignorant fucking <laughs> COVID mandates. And I don't know. They're calling them laws, but they're not laws. They can't be laws. Can't legalize illness. What? This isn't even what they're claiming it to be. So that, that's the beauty of this. People that disagree with me would say, well, Prove that it's not true. Okay, and I would stand on the other side of that and say, well, prove that it is. You have yet to prove to me. Maybe they've proven it to uh, Rome's or Anti, for example. Chloe. That this whole fucking hoax bullshit is a reality. But not me. I don't, I don't buy it for five seconds. Well, now. You know, since about February. But I gave it enough thought at first to come to the decision in a clear thinking way that, nah, this is a government. What, what, what kind of idiot would I be to believe the government now? <laughs> and I should, too, because I'm in that uh, 60 to 80 group. So they're after my ass. They want me, you know, they want us all, all us old geezers to drop. Get the fuck out. Move on. And then, not only do they want the old people to move, they want the young people to be sick and dependent on uh, what is it, Rockefeller medicine, or inoculate them so that they're completely fucking hopeless for the rest of their days, because you don't know what this crap's going to do to you, and there's been enough uh, truth about inoculations from enough sources for enough years that if you still belong to the, I'm for the inoculation group well, that's because that's how you're wired. You're wired to understand that as a good thing. Me, nah, I'm not. I'm not wired to understand that. Hey, Beetle, you old bastard, just came to the real libertymedia.com. Well, I was jibber jabber. Anyway, yeah, I, I'm still convinced that if the if the state thought they had a virus that would kill us off the way that they talked, it would. The last thing they would have done was told us about it. No, 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 no. It would have been some, they would have blamed it on something else. Uncontrollable. Oh, no. How did this happen? Not the, yeah, the results just prove my theory has truth to it, sadly. I'd like to think that it didn't, but I'm not naive anymore. I was like a long time ago when I was just a kid. But, I guess naive is a good place to be, especially when the world's on fire on the, on the internet webs, but the world that you're living in, if the world you're in is good, then the whole purpose of all this COVID shit is to bring the people that are making it through this in a sane state of mind just a little crazy so that they can level the field a little bit. Because this has never been about bringing anybody up. It's always about bringing the people down so that there's a level playing field. Because thinking for yourself is, good God, it's frowned upon. No, 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 don't do that. Thinking for yourself? No, no, we have programs. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
look at how well that works out. <coughs> so I'm going to call it <coughs> Thinking for Yourself is Forbidden. Is that 1D or 2? I think it's 2. But let's see. Read the spell check. Oh, it was 2. <laughs> I'm getting so good at this spell check thing. The squiggly red lines are fun. Anyway, hmm. so we've got 20 minutes to make a full show here. And uh, hmm. outside of the disappointment of government and the, the way I see this as a global hoax, the uh, coronavirus, that thing, <laughs> Other people don't think it's a hoax. And I would assume that the people that don't think it's a hoax are the ones that are related to somebody that died. Period. Because all the news and information is pushing us all to get into that that little tiny box, you know, squeeze you through. Well, it's like a triangle. And they just keep shoving from the back until the first one at the top gets out, and then another one. And it's so backed up, it's going to take forever to clear it. And that's the way the system likes it. Convoluted and vague. And never a direct answer. You know, you don't get one answer, you get ten answers. That way, nobody is left out. <laughs> Except the truth. No, that's not fair. The truth is in it somewhere. The problem is the nine lies that went along with the truth to distract you from whatever the truth could be. Because once you're in a state of fear, wow, there goes your thinking. And people say, well, I'm never in a state of fear. Well, I don't think it's something that we can actually control. I think it's something that is put on us by an outside inter uh, interference, so to speak, through the medias that we use. So for me to sit here and say, well, I'm never afraid. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, it kind of makes sense to a point but because of the way I exist. But if I wasn't afraid of those things, then I wouldn't even be aware of them, I don't think. The way, the way my brain seems to work. So there's got to be a balance to it for me somehow. You know, Where I recognize the things that are evil, I just don't entertain them. I don't even call them that, but other people do. So I try to um, be fair with that. Not, not rearrange the way everybody else thinks, but adjust my outward thinking to theirs. So there's as little conflict in the physical world as necessary. Because that's too much, you know. It's one thing to not get along with people on the internet webs. Kind of expect it, because it's, it's kind of designed the way we use it. To bring out the worst in us at peak times. You know, say something mean to somebody that you don't even know. <sighs> and we do it over and over and over. But because we've got the constant daily contact and type, that's kind of like knowing somebody a little bit. <laughs> you dirty bastard. <laughs> and then there's some people that mean it. And then there's some people that don't. It comes through in the way that uh, you communicate with an individual, you know, over a period of time. And then what they write, you see it differently, depending on how you interpret what they say. And there's no group about it. This is a fuck. If there's 15 bots in the room and 15 people in the room, then there's 15 opinions. <laughs> and, hey, to agree with one or two of them, is, that's a luxury. Ask Rob and Larry about that one Thursday. They they got stuck with me on the radio too. <laughs> and uh, but the lessons learned, they're to me I think they're pretty interesting. Well, now Rob has more specific, detailed uh, kind of questions for Larry than I do because I'm not as involved in the electrical as as Rob is. But it. Like something that just happens at the moment. You can't really plan ahead to see, well, I think I'll ask Larry about this because you haven't thought of it yet. That hit me today, Rob, when I was asking about pre, you know, pre-written questions. Because I do this show off the cuff. I have a little book, 
with little you know comments and lines in it reference to. But for the most part, I just sit here and see what takes over my consciousness. Go into like a trance. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm kidding. But that would be a hell of a way to explain it. Sadly, I just, I think I just do shit. I've, I tried planning and uh, I've got one project right now with some plans. And they're on a schedule and I have to perform a certain activity every day for a certain amount of time. And I don't like clocks. And I don't like having to do things and blah, 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 like that. But when the reward is the results of your effort, then all of a sudden things change for me. And I find myself not so much the enemy of the clock. Because I have a goal. I want this to work out a certain way. There's a recipe. And it takes a certain amount of time every day to go through the process. So, there you go. If I want my result, I have to obey the clock. Now, I'm willing to do that to uh, gain something for myself that I'm doing physically. But I'm not willing to take that stand on a mental level over a, an idea like government. <laughs> Uh, oh, hey, Cowboy Tech, I just caught your uh, comment there way back at five after. Oh, sorry about that. I have a hard time talking and reading the chat at the same time. But uh, the controlling forces, I believe, it's just a matter of your own personal compliance. You know, And I, I also believe people feel trapped. A lot of the compliant, they're not complying out of will. They're complying out of survival. They're afraid. And I am notorious for mocking people's fear and teasing them for being pussies and because I survived all these years not being afraid of all the shit everybody else was afraid of. You know? Oh, you're going to get busted smoking that weed. Oh, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Okay, nice. We'll see what happens. And here I am. And I haven't been busted for smoking the weed since I was 14. And after that, I went, no, we're not going to have no more of this. Somehow or another, it just worked out. But, I mean, as an example, of, oh, you'll see, because I'm very seldom on the receiving end of, oh, you'll see. I do shit because I want to do it. Not because, uh, because, what would you say? I'm allowed to. That's the word I was looking for. Because before weed was legal or not legal or all that shit, I was taught that you have to believe that this is wrong to attract the people to you that are going to do you harm for doing it. And I pretty much always thought of weed as like a friend, not a foe. It's it's my companion. You know? Hey, very good. We got Salesforce through Wikipedia on the RLM chat. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea, but this this COVID thing has got my attention because I don't believe it's true. Not because I believe it's true. I see all the shit happening from it as negative and unnecessary that people shouldn't have ever had to been put through. <laughs> now, sadly, one, there aren't enough people aware of what the truth is to fight it. And two, it seems to me that the people with the loudest voices are trying to become enforcers. They want to be enforcers. They want to belong to something bigger than themselves. That kind of bullshit. Hmm. But I think where my mind goes is, ah, I have more respect for the guy that, like Grim, wants to be left alone, like Rob Works, Cowboy Tech, does his business. He's always nice to people, Cowboy Tech, blah, blah, blah. And then there's some people I wouldn't I wouldn't want to have a cup of coffee with. You know, going into that's pointless. But the Internet has made us uh, uncomfortable around each other because of the way we see the world. <laughs> Big deal. You know, when push comes to shove you know, and the neighbor needs something, and they ask for it, I'm going to give it to them if I have it. And 
that's the understanding that the people I live among seem to have. You know, that they never uh, demand anything. Nobody here uh, treats the other guy like a bad guy. We're just neighbors. Hey, how you doing? Going to the grocery. And uh, I think I've just been spoiled by that. The luxury of, you know, being in a small rural place where there's no uh, outside interference, you know, from other countries and other cultures. They don't do anything here. There's no meetings. There's <laughs> there's no BLM meetings or whatever you call them, protests. I don't think there's like maybe, I don't know, two or three dozen dark people that live here on this in this local area. But I don't know. I guess it doesn't it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. I think it's uh it's a matter of how much anger that I was raised up with do I still want to carry in my, you know, sixties. And I don't really think I got it I got too much interest left in being all that angry because crying out loud. Ooh, look at all the shit that comes from being angry. You say a bunch of shit you don't really want to say, or you don't mean it. You just like angry. No, I do that all. I do that with Hansel. I don't think that if me and Hansel ever had to sit down face to face, just out of human, you know, decency. I don't think that's a him, but I know this in myself. Out of human decency, I wouldn't. I wouldn't speak to him in person the way I do on the internet. Because the things that we play about on the internet, to me, don't really matter. They don't have a value. I don't care about your government. I don't care about your monarchies. or I don't care about your work, your careers, your schooling, all that horseshit. Whatever you went through in your life, that's you. <laughs> so, you know, if, if all there is left in, in another person is to throw shit at other people... I avoid them. You either avoid them or I pick one out and just pick on that one. And to all the people that I ignore, you like it that way. I like it that way. You like it that way. The world spins. You know, it doesn't fucking matter. Anyway, I, I'm a believer of the things that matter are the things that we never talk about. And the things that really don't matter are the only things that we can collectively talk about. <laughs> because that's what personal is about one-on-one. -on -one, you know? When you're in a group, what do you talk about in a group? Jibber-jabber. And I'm sorry about these pitiful notes, but I'm sending them to you, Graham. I didn't, I'm stoned. I didn't do very good with notes tonight. And we're going to send them off to Grim Near in New Mexico from Denmark. And that's still, to me, just such a... I was walking back from the grocery today, and I have neighbors down the road that work on their home in any kind of weather there is. It doesn't matter. These guys are out there building fences. They're messing around with concrete, building walls, and making rock, stone walls. And all You name it, they're out there doing it. So, wow. It's just... To look around where I'm at and see the crap on the internet is uh, day and night, I think. Uh, I can't match my reality with any reality that I see on the internet webs, except for a few folks in the chat room. You know, the ones that are comfortable with their self and their surroundings and they're you know, living life like Mary. Well, but I'm not that busy. Uh oh. Hey, Jay's wasn't all connected. I don't know. I didn't do much. Just a rant about the negative side of the hoax. Why I think that. <laughs> wow, we're we're in some big trouble in the future. If what I've seen over the last 10 months is true on the interwebs, if the, if the negative stuff is real, then the shit that's coming by the next year is going to be some uh, mood-changing shit. How's that? So I made it to the end of In a Perfect World. Still here. Nobody here died of the corona yet. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and Grimner has a RLM, the real liberty media .com. Go to it. Open up page. And 
he has a schedule for all the radio podcasts that are going on. There's a few people doing stuff now. So, you know, I told you a long time ago, Grim, when I didn't believe. But when people get desperate enough, and they, they will soon, that the ones on the Internet are going to stop spending so much time gaming and fucking about. And they're going to start looking for, you know, other opinions. And, hey, wonder what this these yo-yos are talking about. And, you yeah, know, eventually. Uh-oh. Eddie died? No fucking way. I mean, not, well, yeah. Wow. Oh, well, there's another one. Eddie Van Halen, 65. Wow. I didn't know. I thought he was older than that, too. But I never did really, <laughs> never did really ask anybody or look. You know, it's just an assumption on my part, because uh, I was in, uh, I was in Downey and shit when they were playing at the Starwood Ballroom. Starwood, what was it? No, the Starwood Star West, something like that. I can't remember. But uh, in Norwalk, it's closed now, but back in the 70s in the day. So, yeah, that's a hell of a way to close the show is looking up and reading that uh, Eddie's gone. But, wow. Hey, did he die of the Rona? <laughs> he probably just vanished and disappeared and took some money and split. I mean, that would be the smartest thing to do right now. But, anyway, so... Uh, I was going on about all the good stuff that's on the reallibertymedia.com for us to enjoy and such. And that's about it. I'm going to try to find the stuff here to close up with, and I'm going to call it a show, folks. So <laughs> thanks a lot for hanging with me while I bitched about the Rona, the Bologna, the Trump, and the Biden, and what else is all the other just horrid shit going on. Hurricanes, and disasters, and blam, 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 blam. And then I come along with my, you know, I'm having a great time here in Denmark through this shithole thing, Rona thing. And I guess it puts me off. I feel kind of weird because, you know, things aren't going so well just about everywhere else. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm going to get my windows together here and Close up the radio, folks. So thanks a lot for playing along with me. See ya.